Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Shyam Varadarajulu in diagnosing a pancreatic tail cystic lesion. So this is a patient uh, who presented with the two attacks of pancreatitis. He's uh, about 64 years old and uh, the etiology is unclear. There's a remote history of smoking and alcohol use, but we don't know. He underwent a CAT scan and a MRI, MRCP that showed a complex cyst lesion in the tail of the pancreas. So I'm in the, I'm in the stomach and here is the pancreatic cyst lesion. I'm talking around. This by appearance looks to be a pseudo cyst, but the problem is uh, he's asymptomatic. Uh, he has no problem at all. And there's a concern on CT scan and on MRI that this could be a mucinous neoplasm that gave rise to pancreatitis and they were concerned is there an indwelling uh, is there an indwelling malignancy somewhere by evas morphology i am not very sure but uh, but uh, what the, the plan was to aspirate some fluid and and maybe use the use the more forceps through the needle uh, to get some tissue so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a give the patient antibiotics we always give them uh, a third generation cephalosporin or Cipro. And this is a flexible 19 gauge needle. Uh, I'm using the Pentax linear array scope. I'm going to find a good window to scope, yes. to, to puncture the cyst. And I'm going for those projections at the very end. Uh, something in me tells me uh, this is nothing but uh, epithelial debris. But the surgeon uh, was fairly convinced this is a cyst neoplasm. So I'm going to puncture this collection. And let's take the style it out, aspirate some fluid. I can start. We're going to aspirate the fluid to see what type it is. As you can see, to me, this is a clear straw colored fluid. I don't think uh, this is mucin at all. This is just a straw colored fluid. Uh, I'm going to send this for amylase and lipase uh, examination. And we will also get a CEA on that. And then now, And now I'm going to get the more forceps. For, we now use the more forceps based on available data on all patients with pancreatic fluid collections, uh, pancreatic cyst lesions that have a solid component. So this is our go-to uh, process. If there's a big mass and the predominant cyst is completely filled with a solid debris, then our uh, preference will be to just go with a, a, a biopsy needle, FNB needle and take a sample. Uh, but if it is predominantly cystic, then we prefer to use the 19 gauge needle uh, and, and, and then sample it. So you can see here, the, the, it, it is, the more forceps is now exiting, exiting the cyst. I'm gonna make it a little darker and then I'm gonna retract it back to show you that it is open. And then once it's opened, I'm gonna push it out, close again for a second. Yeah, I'm gonna push it out, open again. And I'm going to push it on the wall. It's sometimes not well seen, but it's very safe. I'm going to push it on the wall, park my scope, close it, and I'm going to pull back. That's usually a pressure, and I can feel it. That's it. So now I'm going to extract it. I'm going to leave the needle within the cyst. And we have uh, what we do here, uh, Thomas, in our practice is uh, we have a fantastic on-site cytopathology support. Usually this is not required. This can be sent in formalin but we'll usually put a place a drop and do the touch prep technique uh, to have a look under the microscope and then everything else is sent in formalin um, back to the pathology lab uh, for, uh, for off-site assessment. So they use it, I am. they use the cell drop technique. Uh, how often you have the bleeding inside the cyst during the procedure with ah, more right forces? We, uh, just uh, to be honest with you, leave it there. What we do is uh, we perform three uh, biopsies, Louis. Um, so you can see that this needle is persistently affixed. And we generally talk to our cyto cytotechnician. Was there any tissue on the last pass? So there was uh, good tissue on the last pass. So what you will see is uh, this needle stays there in position uh, exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to retract it a tiny bit. And I'm going to take it, I never pull the needle back because I avoid repeated puncture of the cyst 
with the needle because I'm always concerned that I'm going to introduce infection. So now uh, you can see that, uh, see how beautiful you can see it going out of the needle oh, and I'm pushing it on open minds. And then, and then we're going to move a little bit and then I'm going to advance it, lock it, close it. And then I can feel a pull. If I don't feel a pull, I'm not happy about it. And I did not feel uh, your, your good uh, uh, your, your, your resistance going in. So I'm going to retract, send it in, open, and then I'm going to advance further further close and and then and then we're going to retract it back so now we want to see if this is available on the microscope uh conrad do we have anything to look we have microscope images please so we are going to go to the microscope Micro and show you what we have so we're going to check for mucin so obviously you can see that there is no mucin all that we have is some epithelial cells and 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 a debris so this clearly is a pseudocyst. This is not a mucinous neoplasm. Uh, we'll just leave this alone since the patient is asymptomatic. I don't think there's a need to drain and so on. So we did two passes. And uh, the first is just epithelial fragments and debris uh, with no evidence of any mucin or atypical cells. Here you see the follow-up information of the patient who continues to have the abdominal pain. Here you see the instruments and devices used in this case. And finally, this is Shyam's recommended reading.